go. And, uh, I want to uh, uh, suggest to you that you all mute at this time. If you wouldn't mind muting so that we won't have any disturbing noises. And uh, as and you can talk to them, Osnet. Osnet is our technical coordinator, our technical host. Hello. Uh, who happens to make it all happen. And of course, uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, welcoming you, welcoming you here. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is the second in our new series of Global Pioneer 50 50 Conversations. I'm glad that we're closing this up. Thank you to all of you for joining us today. We want to especially thank you, the entrepreneurs, for tuning in. And please feel free to visit bdc.ca. Wonder where that came from. <laughs> Beth, Helen, can you mute, please? <laughs> Someone must have been listening to a radio or something. I'm not quite sure. There we go. <laughs> Please mute. Uh, and uh, sorry. So this is the second in our new series of Global Pioneer 5050 Conversations. Moira was the person, Moira, the co-founder and international coordinator of Pass It On Network, uh, was our first speaker. And she talked about the magic of networks. And uh, the, uh, the second one right today, the today's session is on digital inclusion. And that also serves as the kickoff for forming a Pass It On Network priority group focused on advocacy for what is basic for pursuing digital inclusion worldwide. Today's presenters have worked together uh, to provide what they think is are considered basic for digital inclusion. First, by developing public-private nonprofit partnerships committed to empowering high expectations for positive aging. And second, by providing accessible, hands-on, low-cost technology teaching and learning. And you'll see why when I introduce them each one is an expert in the, in the, in, in the area to cover these uh, basics. Uh, Richard Adler is well known throughout the United States as a futurist who's passionate about the goal of digital inclusion for older people. He's been actively involved in the field of aging and technology for more than 20 years. He's a distinguished fellow at the Institute for the Future which is based in Palo Alto, and principal of People and Technology, a consulting firm in Silicon Valley. He currently serves as the chair of age-friendly Cupertino and is a member of the advisory board for Santa Clara County's Area Agency on Aging. You'll see why I mentioned those particular uh, institutions because that has the, been the focus of his work uh, which has been locating, uh, uh, which has involved Ryan. Ryan Kawamoto is the regional director for older adults technology services, we call it OATS, from AARP, where he empowers older adults learning how to use technology at the Senior Planet Center from AARP. Notice he will describe how AARP has recently purchased, I believe, uh, a senior planet from its founder, Tom Camber, uh, that they have been locating a center in Avenidas, which is a wonderful community center in Palo Alto, the heart of Silicon Valley. He has also been working closely uh, with Richard on the Santa Clara County Digital Inclusion Working Group to advocate for funding for older adults digital inclusion. Uh, Ryan has been the, uh, is now the current co-president of the Japantown Community Congress of San Jose, former executive director of UIKI, Japanese American Community Senior Center of yeah. San Jose, and former chair of the Aging Services Collaborative of San Jose County. So we're going to be hearing from these two people. Now the question is, why do we call these 50-50 conversations? 
because we are encouraging them uh, to keep their presentation under a half hour, which means that what by, by uh, one half of the time, uh, we'll give them to 1235 Eastern time uh, uh, for their presentation. And the remainder, the remaining half will be spent responding to the questions that I hope that you'll be putting into the chat book box. Just put it to everyone, but put Q in front of the question, if you would. And we will be, and if you have one person to, to, to challenge with it, fine. But otherwise, uh, Osnat and I will be uh, picking out questions and I hope filling the time. Now, Richard has already said that he's very eager to hear from people who are working in the field of digital inclusion. And he hopes that they will have the opportunity uh, to speak, uh, speak up today. Uh, and uh, let's, let's get started, please. Uh, Richard, will you begin uh, with your presentation? Yes, thank you, Jan. I am, I am so thrilled and honored to be here with this international audience. This is work that, you know, we started kind of locally in our backyard and I've been really just so impressed by how, how this effort has resonated, you know, first in our region and, and then nationally and now globally. So I'm going to uh, put up some slides. Hopefully you'll be able to see them. Uh, those, hopefully people will be able to see my slides now. Can we see the slides? Yes. Yes, good, wonderful, okay. So I'm gonna talk about um, how we've been promoting digital inclusion here in Santa Clara County. So we're gonna focus on what we mean by digital inclusion, talk a little bit about why it's important, and then what we've been doing to promote it. But first, since this is an international audience, I'd, I'd like to uh, introduce Santa Clara County and explain what, what this is. So uh, we're in California. We're um, that little red area is Santa Clara County. We are at the southern end of the San Francisco Bay and the San Francisco Bay region. Um, this is a kind of a close up of the county. It, it kind of has two parts in the upper left is the sort of most populated part of the county. It has something like 15 uh, cities in it. The largest is San Jose, where about half the county's population is, but other uh, notable cities like uh, Palo Alto, Mountain View, and, and Cupertino, which is where I live. Um, the southern half of the, of the county is more rural, and there are a couple of towns there like Gilroy, which and others, but lots of open space and some very large parks. So we have an uh, urban, urban part, a very urban part, a lot of suburban areas, and then we also have rural areas as well. It um, is, in fact, uh, an interesting place, probably best known as the home of Silicon Valley. Um, it, uh, we are the home of Apple Computer, Google, Intel, Hewlett Packard, and it's also the home of Stanford University, uh, just right. next to Palo Alto, which is really where the where Silicon Valley got started back in the 1930s, uh, in the little garage in Palo Alto where <laughs> Mr. Hewlett and Mr. Packard okay, got together. Yeah. Um, just a little bit on our demographics. This county has a population of just under 2 million, about 1.9 million people. Somebody is not muted. If we could ask everybody to mute, that would be helpful. Uh, thanks. Um, you know, and although when people think about Santa Clara County and Silicon Valley, they think of young tackies, but it has a substantial older population, just under 14% of the population is 65 plus, about 268,000. Uh, and although people think of this as a very affluent area, and much of it is, 8% uh, of the 65 plus are below the federal poverty level and almost 40%, two out of five, below 200% of the federal poverty level. And given the very high price of housing here, that means people have very little income. It's also a highly uh, ethnically diverse um, county, 2% uh, African American, 14% uh, Latin, Latinx and Hispanic. A uh, full third of the county is Asian, uh, particularly Chinese, uh, Vietnamese, Japanese, and Indian. 
Uh, and a minority of this uh, county is, uh, is white. So we are a minority majority county and a very large portion of the county uh, are people who are not born in the United States. So that's who we are. And now let's look at the issue of digital inclusion. Uh, I can move my slides on. Oh, one other thing to say about us. We are also the first county in the United States in which every city, and there are 15 cities in the county, have become officially designated as age friendly. And this was an effort that was led by the county's Department of Aging and uh, a project called the Senior Agenda. And uh, back in 2019, we all became age friendly cities and the county itself is age friendly. And that's helped us as we, to give us a kind of an infrastructure for the work we've been doing. So here's the, so let's now focus on the issue. So here the issue that we've been working on is to close the digital divide for older adults in this county in order to combat social isolation, provide access to vital services and encourage greater social participation and civic engagement. So that's that's really the, the key. What, what we mean by the opposite, the sort of flip side of the digital divide is, is digital inclusion. And we think of that as really having three components for somebody to be able to uh, participate digitally, they need some sort of a device, whether it's a computer, a smartphone or a tablet, they need some kind of connection to the internet. And particularly for older adults, they need the skills to, to, to use it. They need to be digitally literate. So what is the digital divide? This is really, this, this one um, slide, I think really explains it, that older adults have consistently lagged behind younger people in the use of the internet. Uh, I've been working on this issue for 30 years. I started in the early 1990s when almost nobody was online. It was just a niche phenomenon. And I would have been rather astounded if somebody said 30 years later, there still would be a digital divide. What you can see is that in the year 2000, where this graph starts, uh, there was a gap of about 50%. It's those top lines are the younger people. And the bottom line are the 65 year olds. And you see all the lines are going upward, but that gap persists. And so even in 2018, when this data stops, there's still a 30 point gap, a fairly substantial gap between the number of younger and older people who are online. And it's not just true of the internet. Older adults lag behind younger people with many different types of technology. It's true of the internet, home broadband, smartphone adoption, tablets, social media. And what you can see from, you know, all these lines are going up. Roughly. All the lines are going up, but the, the gap remains. And in fact, in some of these cases, look at the case of smartphones and social media, over the times that these charts uh, uh, cover, the gap actually increases because younger people are early adopters. When a new technology comes along, they jump on it and uh, adapt it. And older people, you know, will get online, but they tend to be later adopters. And finally, the digital divide is not just between people under and over the age of 65, it's within the oldest population. So if you're 65, to 69, you're more likely to be online than if you're 70 or 75 or 80. In fact, for something like the use of the internet, uh, twice as many uh, people 65 to uh, 69 are online, 82% as those who are over the age of 80, where it's down at 44%. And if you look at something like ownership of the smartphone, that digital divide is even greater. So here's the bottom line. In terms, this is really probably the metric that we focus on most. Who has access today to broadband at home? That's really the kind of key to being able to participate in the digital world. And it, the gap is really almost double the number of older adults who are not having home broadband where it's about 20% uh, of those who are under the age of 65 still lack home broadband, mostly because of income uh, or lack of education but that's fully 40% for those who are, who are over um, 65. And here, if, if you do the math here in Santa Clara County, that means there are as many as 100,000 people in this county, many of whom are living alone and um, 
are not connected. And you know, whereas that was sort of a, a, a kind of a, a, a low level problem when COVID hit and people became isolated and particularly older adults who were the most vulnerable, uh, suddenly these people were truly isolated. Well, why does it matter? Let's just look at one example, uh, telemedicine. You know, when COVID hit, uh, healthcare providers uh, very rapidly shifted from seeing patients in person to doing it online. It'd been possible for decades, but there were a whole bunch of rules that made it difficult to do. And, you know, if you're online, if you're connected, if you know how to do it, it's great. But if you're not online, you know, you're losing out. And, you know, I like that headline that says, healthcare zooming past many seniors. And it, it's the story of one man who, who needed healthcare and who really was struggling to get access to online. The same thing happened when uh, uh, COVID vaccine, vaccine was first made available and the best way to sign up was online. And again, great if you have internet access, not so great otherwise. And it's not just, it's not just telemedicine. You know, there's a whole host of services that are moving online. Online banking, online shopping, uh, ride hailing services like Uber, uh, you know, air travel, um, you know, you make reservations online. Education uh, increasingly is going online. Um, you want to renew your driver's license, you can do that online. And even something like social security, which is specifically for older adults, more and more the best way to do that is online. So if you're not online, you know, you, you really are cut off. And in the age of uh, COVID where all so many institutions shut their doors, uh, it suddenly, the idea of getting older people online went from something that was nice to do to something that was truly urgent to do. Well, so how did we get involved? What happened was about uh, in the spring of 2020, the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors allocated $7 million to allow uh, school children who weren't online to get uh, technology so that they could get online. And I thought this was a great thing, but it was sort of ignoring a second group who was on the wrong side of the digital divide, which was older adults. So I started lobbying with some other people to get the supervisors to do something about it. And in August 2020, the Board of Supervisors authorized the creation of a digital inclusion work group. Uh, this group has met monthly now since October of last year, so just about a year, under the auspices of the county's Department of Aging and Adult Services. Uh, we have about 30 members, very diverse group. Uh, we we, we, it includes representatives of the 15 cities in the county, senior centers, county agencies like the health department, uh, the senior care commission and the area agency on aging, which I'm involved with, uh, a variety of uh, senior service agencies, the libraries are involved, retirement communities, and a, and a whole host of nonprofit organizations that serve the older adults. So we've been meeting on a monthly basis. And what have we been doing? Let me just quickly highlight a couple of things we've done back in March. We ran a series of online webinars we called March Madness. And those of you not in the US, March Madness is the term that's used for the basketball playoffs for the uh, college teams. And so we thought we would adopt that. And uh, we held a series of three workshops on um, uh, connecting to older adults uh, with programming, one on telehealth and one on connecting the unconnected. And these each drew about 50 to 70 people. The other major thing that we did was to publish a white paper, the first edition in June and a second edition just this month. Uh, it's about a 40 page document that includes information on the demographics, just the kinds of data I've been sharing, the state of tech use by older adults, a discussion of why it matters, uh, the uh, impact of the lack of tech access, uh, and then, a whole section that describes a whole variety of local, state, and national digital inclusion pro programs. And we, we were told by a number of the people, including the supervisors, that this has been a very impactful document. So it's been very helpful. If you're interested, the URL where it is available, it is posted online at agefriendlysiliconvalley.org slash news hyphen room. Uh, you can download it. Uh, the first edition was sort of uh, just very plain uh, text. The second edition, thanks to my friend Ryan, who you'll be hearing from in a moment, 
is very beautiful because it was laid out graphically. What are, so what are we going to be doing next? Uh, I can go on to my next slide. Uh, we've got a number of uh, goals for the next year. We're, we're, our biggest uh, goal is to get, uh, get the funding for a pilot project that would actually involve up to 2,000 lower income residents getting online. Uh, and we're seeking about a million and a half dollars for that project. Uh, we want to organize a digital inclusion summit for Santa Clara County that would highlight the needs, the responses and best practices. We want to offer more webinars or maybe even in-person events to share our learnings and to coordinate, continue to coordinate and support activities of the variety of groups and agencies that are working on this. We really see our, the work of the working group primarily as a coordinator and a catalyst of activities that are underway now. And one uh, final thing is, so one of the things that we had done in uh, April of this year is we organized uh, uh, Zoom-based meetings with each of the county supervisors and their staff. And I think this was actually a great example of how uh, uh, Zoom made it possible. This is a big county with terrible traffic under ordinary circumstances. And trying to organize these meetings in person would have been difficult, if not impossible. But uh, it was relatively easy to do with, uh, with, with Zoom. So uh, we have been advocating. And the one in that picture down in the lower uh, right-hand corner, the meeting with Supervisor Cindy Chavez. On the upper left in that box, that is Supervisor Chavez, who is the chair of the Board of Supervisors. So we've been working very hard to continue to um, cultivate and grow our support from the political groups. Now we just got to get them to allocate some money to us. Finally, uh, one very recent development. Uh, we started here in Santa Clara County, but in August of 2021, we heard from a number of our neighbors that there were also similar kinds of digital inclusion activities going on. And so we are now in the process of forming a Bay Area digital inclusion uh, uh, coalition that will involve people from San Francisco, San Mateo, Alameda, Contra Costa, Marin, Solano, Sonoma, and uh, Santa Cruz counties. These are all the counties that are surrounding us. And we're, we're putting together some information about the various activities that we're doing. So uh, we, we've grown uh, and we are going to continue. One of the great assets that we've had is the presence of the Senior Planet Program uh, in our area. And so what I'd like to do is turn the podium over to my good colleague and, and uh, uh, supporter and collaborator, Ryan Kawamoto, who will describe particularly what Senior Planet brings to this uh, effort. Great, thanks so much, Richard. Again, I'm Ryan Kalmoda, I'm Regional Director for Senior Planet, um, and I'm going to share my screen right now. And so just to take a step back, um, Older Adult Technology Services runs Senior Planet sites around the country, and it's actually Older Adult Technology Services from ARP. We are we're a nonprofit. Um, our headquarters is in Brooklyn, New York, uh, and we were founded in 2004 by a visionary, and I consider him a rock star um, between the, when, in working within the intersection of older adults and technology. Um, and so we were founded in 2004 by Thomas Camber, and we quickly launched um, a site um, in 2013, our first Senior Planet Exploration Center in the heart of Manhattan in Chelsea, which is just this amazing, vibrant neighborhood. And we quickly expanded across the United States. Uh, I actually checked this morning and we've served over 300,000 participants uh, since we launched. Uh, we have a, a site in um, uh, rural New York in Plattsburgh. Uh, it's actually in a shopping mall, and so it's, it actually takes up a physical retail space. Um, we have um, sites in Montgomery County, um, right outside of the DC area, Denver, Colorado, San Antonio, Texas, and in California. 
And in 2021, we became affiliated, as Jan mentioned, uh, with AARP. And so what that means is that we are still keeping our own autonomy. Tom is still our executive director, but it now means uh, access to 38 million members uh, across the um, United States and the, the United States territories. Um, and here in California, we have 3.8 million members with uh, affiliated with AARP California. And so really um, from a participant um, standpoint, they haven't really seen a lot of uh, changes in our programming, which has been absolutely wonderful. And we received quite a bit of feedback to keep our autonomy, but it's also meant a lot more support, um, a lot more outreach channels and uh, abilities to communicate to a larger population. And so, as I mentioned, we have sites all around um, the United States. Our motto is aging with attitude. And so we see ourselves as a social change model. So it's not just how you turn on and off your iPad, but really how do we create social change? How do we empower older adults to enhance their lives? And so our training model is designed with and for older adults in mind. We use mainstream devices and applications, and we really have an emphasis on partnerships. Um, and as Richard mentioned, you know, there is a huge broadband gap for older adults. Uh, this is actually, these statistics came from our a recent report that um, Oats from AARP created, where 73% um, of adults from 18 to 64 um, have in-home wireless broadband, but 58% of older adults, 65%. So you can see a lag behind. And then with this pandemic, um, you can see that 80% of COVID uh, deaths, uh, especially um, in the United States, uh, were older adults, and 40% of them um, lack you know, online resources and social connectedness. So shifting over to our physical space, um, if you actually look to the left side, that is actually our senior planet site. It's based in Palo Alto as part of Avenidas, which is considered the gold standard of community centers in our area for older adults. Uh, this is in downtown Palo Alto. They actually spent $18 million to renovate the facility. And so we actually um, have a space embedded in the, in the actual facility, which is unique. Usually our senior planet sites are standalone sites. Um, and this is actually in, um, in our space. What I love is that we actually are combating ageism. And so our motto, you know, our ethos is really um, providing the best and the greatest and latest technology for our older adults. And so we actually have six Apple TVs. We have 13 iPads. Uh, we have a, a, a four Oculuses with virtual reality, a PlayStation 4, a Nintendo Switch. And we have these boots in the back where it's really meant for older adults to hang out, um, work together. And of course we did shut down in March, 2020 when the pandemic hit our area. And this is just one of our classes uh, uh, related to our iPhone photography before we close down. But you can see it's really meant to be an intimate space with older adults interacting. And uh, for me, uh, it was really fun. I, one of my favorite stories is that I log into not only the iPhones, but iPads. Um, and you can see a lot of pictures of just foreheads or the ceiling as people are practicing using their cameras. So locally, we have served over 13,000 um, participants uh, since March 2020. Uh, we've had, we provided over 960 sessions, over 1,300 hours of programming, and we do a weekly email blast um, that you can start subscribe to on our uh, website where you can get uh, weekly updates on our programming, and we have over 1,400 email subscribers. And really, we focus on programming for five main areas, health and wellness, uh, social engagement, creativity, financial literacy, and advocacy. And if you notice, technology is not one of our impact areas because that's where we believe technology is a tool to enhance your lives in, within these five areas. And so in response to the pandemic, uh, we quickly shifted all of our programming, which was traditionally only on site to virtual. And we really tried to think through a comprehensive strategy of what our older adult participants would need. So we quickly started offering twice weekly trainings on how to use Zoom, how to host Zoom meetings, how to use your mute, your unmute button. We actually now provide a free national hotline uh, across the United States. We then were providing explore tech lectures and workshops. We actually have an award-winning curriculum with over 60 different topics, whether it be cloud storage, what is a podcast, which actually became very popular during the pandemic, how to use YouTube, what's streaming and smart television. And also, you know, how do you do a tour on a virtual museum website? Uh, and we also have been providing Tech Talks, which is our one-on-one -on -one tech support, where we provide support for older adults. It's actually free as well, but we ask that you do register beforehand, and, you and it's about half an hour of free support with a specific question. 
And then really focusing on preventing social isolation. So we started discussion groups. We have one on Monday, which is about the latest trends in technology. We have a short story discussion group that became so popular, we actually had to create a waiting list. And we're actually starting two new discussion groups uh, this fall quarter, um, both focus on podcasts, older adults, and technology. And I just wanted to mention a specific initiative. Gerard is actually um, attending today, but he has been a fantastic, amazing partner out of Aki, where we received funding from our um, SourceWise, which is our local area agency on aging, uh, to do some innovative programming. And because of the area plan, we started to see that there's really an overlooked population, especially amongst the Asian American community, both Mandarin speaking participants and Vietnamese speaking participants. And so while, while there's been a plethora of English programming, there hasn't really been a lot of programming specifically in these languages. And so that's where last January, we created a partnership where we've been actually providing these sessions in Mandarin and Vietnamese. And because of Aki's amazing efforts, I can actually say last month we had on average uh, 55 participants and overnight because they did some outreach, we're now getting about 100 participants for each session. And this is also a partnership that we have with Avenida's Chinese Community Center. Avenida's, as I mentioned before, is a gold standard for older adult community centers. There's act they're actually our funder and they've been just a huge um, support system, especially as we shifted to online programming. And this is our website uh, for Mandarin speaking programming. As you can see, it's both in Mandarin and in English. And just wanted to mention some upcoming events. We all of our programming is free and accessible online via Zoom. And so we actually have a Ready Set Bank uh, uh, course, which is a partnership with Capital One. It's free. Um, and it's all about just how do you do secure online banking? How do you feel comfortable you know, going online and making sure that what you're doing is okay? Uh, as I mentioned, we have our two new podcast discussion groups and our uh, Mandarin and Vietnamese speaking programming. And I just wanted to mention our licensing programming. We are now doing a pilot program across the United States that if you know of an older adult community center that's interested in having access to our materials, we actually have our staff train the, the older adult center staff uh, to um, be able to roll out our, our programming. But if there's anything to note, it's please to visit our website where all of our programming and further information is, is online. And uh, I wanted to be very respectful of the time, so I'll wrap up rather quickly, but just want to mention seniorplanet.org is that main website. We also have a website called agingconnected.org, uh, which is actually, uh, we received generous funding from the Humana Foundation to connect older adults to the internet. And uh, we have two uh, hotlines that are free within the United States, one where you can call for internet connectivity to find out if you have subsidized uh, service providers and also just any free tech support. And um, as I mentioned, Agent Connected. And just wanted to mention my favorite testimony is at the bottom where it's, uh, what did you like the most about today's session? I was at home in my pajamas learning new things. And so this is my information and I'll stop there because I really want to respect the 50-50 of really actually, I'm not sure Richard said, I'm hearing feedback and what's going around, around in, in the world. This is great. So thanks so much for having me and I look forward to answering questions. Here I am. Uh, this is Jan. One, 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 just, just one question the, that you could answer immediately is, is your, are your services available outside the U.S.? Exactly. I wanted to, uh, before, you, before you comment, though, I just want to just tell you, tell the group that uh, I have been tracking Senior Planet since it was a storefront in, in Brooklyn. Uh, and I am so impressed by uh, all of its services. But what I find now when I get my mailing every week is that I have a full list of courses for every day of the week and I can choose any one of them. And I guess that, that hooks in to the question that, that Osnett just referred to from the uh, 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 participant, which is uh, what about uh, people outside of the US? From my understanding, that they could get the free subscription because it's online and they could be clicking in and registering online because the classes are free. Am I correct in that? Absolutely. And that's really part of our model that we're really meant to be open to everyone and it's accessible to everyone. That's part of Tom's vision. And so all of our programming is free. 
and actually accessible on our website. And you don't even need to register for most of our sessions, uh, especially if it's our Explore Tech lectures and workshops. And so it's all via Zoom. The only issue is the time difference. I was actually just recently talking to a uh, dentist in Malaysia who told her friend about some of our programming. And the friends were saying that most of our programming is at 1 a.m. their time. Um, but it is um, all accessible um, on, on our website just by clicking that link. Um, on that note, though, um, we don't usually um, record our sessions because we found that it's actually much better for our trainers to be live because they can interact, they can go at the pace of the questions in the chat or that are coming up. So we do have a YouTube channel that has some tutorials, um, and that is, um, you can go to that website via our um, seniorplanet.org um, um, website. Um, or you can just type into YouTube the search of Senior Planet and a lot of videos will come up. But it's not quite the same as our live sessions and that's been somewhat intentional that we wanna provide customized uh, support when we're live in those sessions. So I just wanted to comment uh, again that um, they would need to go just to seniorplanet.org to do the, get the free subscription uh, to the list of uh, online programs that comes out weekly, is that correct? Absolutely, and so if you go to our website, you can click on the Get Involved link where then you can actually subscribe to our um, email blast. We actually have six different email blasts that are based on the time zones in the United States oh. um, and by, by um, you know, programmatic area. Um, so that's where, if it makes more sense to subscribe to the East Coast time zone, I would recommend that. But I, you know, I'm biased towards the Pacific time zone. Um, but that's where you will get access to all of our programming. Um, and again, at the appropriate time, all you need to do is click on the link. Um, if you want, you can become a member of Senior Planet. And what that means is that you get access to special events. We had a really cool fashion show a couple of years ago that was streamed live. That was um, just for our, our special members. Um, we actually served wine and cheese um, at our site. Um, but for the most part, um, you don't even have to, have to be a member. You can just click on the link when the session um, uh, starts and you'll be brought in. Please note that we do have a waiting room because of Zoom security protocols, uh, but our trainers will let you right into the session right um, right at the start time. Okay, and why not, one more question here is, uh, ha, you, do you have any locations that are outside of the US where you have a physical location? We currently don't, and um, please, uh, if, if you are interested in a site, I actually talked to our director of operations last week, uh, please feel free to email me, um, um, and I'm more happy to, to share my information. Uh, my information is also on the website, um, and be more happy to connect you with our headquarters. Um, you know, Tom is constantly traveling. He um, loves partnerships, especially international partnerships, uh, but at this point, we've been primarily focused, um, you know, within the United States. Good, wonderful. And I love that before. <laughs> just, uh, uh, yes. There were two specific questions in the chat that are kind of hard to articulate just by reading them. Do you mind if I just invite these people to ask them in, in person? To do what? To, to ask people to ask the question instead of just oh, reading oh, no, it. That, that's fine. I would yeah. like to just call out a couple of people though that have uh, uh, a very interesting digital inclusion programs. Oh, sure, uh, have, let's do that. Do you mind speaking about what you're doing? It was in, uh, is it Slovakia, Anna? You're on mute. Or is it Slovenia? I'm sorry. I'm... You're on mute, Anna. Anna's in Slovenia. Anna, you're on mute still. Asad, can you unmute her? I can only ask her to unmute. By the way, one of the, thing, one of the things that I learned that fascinated me, having had a conversation with some folks in Slovenia, is it's almost exactly the same size in terms of population as Santa Clara County. Oh, interesting. So here is Anna. You hear me? Now. Yes, yes, we do. Yes. I don't hear very well you, but it will work, I hope. Yeah. So uh, thank, you, thank you very much for both previous speakers. Um, the, your presentations were really wonderful and were very formative. I'm not so used to Zoom, so well educated for working on Zoom. So I didn't use our uh, data and pictures and so on. I'm sorry, it would be better if I could. 
I'm uh, I'm from Slovenia. It's a relatively small country which lies between Vienna and Venice. Hmm. Venice between Italy and Austria. And uh, we are a Slavic country and we are speaking a Slavic Slovene language. So my English will not be so good. Um, I'm the president of uh, 56 third age universities in Slovenia, which we established for the education of elderly in 1984. And our plan was to have in every local community one. They are not in all communities, but mostly in most communities, we, they have their own center for elderly education. We started from, I can say zero, because everybody was believing that only young people can learn and the one who works need knowledge, not elderly, what for? That's the situation when we started. And um, then, but it suddenly, when we started, it, it grew very quickly. Uh, people discovered, they said, you changed my retirement. And the younger people said, now I can be glad to be retired one day. And like, I like forward to be your student. Uh, so the mentality in country has changed but not so much basically, you know, not so much the prejudice that the old people, the studies we did must be in dark, uh, dark uh, suits that they have to stay quiet in a corner and that they must be passive and so on. Very backward, I must say, prejudice, which doesn't work today with younger adults at all. Uh, but let me go to the COVID situation. COVID situation was very hard in our country for older people. Um, the health authorities uh, and Ministry of Health and hospitals were scared because the infected people, the number grew, grew so quickly that they reserved all beds and intensive care for younger people. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the older people were left in uh, homes, residences. There were no skilled um, people who, uh, nurses and so on, and doctors who could treat them in the worst situation. And they were simply dying in residential homes. But this left a kind of um, bad feeling also for younger people, you know. Uh, some look, now they are talking about the crime and so on, but the situation itself created it. And after that, uh, the attention for older people in our country suddenly has raised, suddenly has raised. And we started to do two things, change the legislation in work, work legislation, labor force for retired people and for elderly. But uh, it was not ready yet. And I must say even today, what we continue and we insist on earning, learning and earning. And I think it's one of the basic human rights that you can learn and you can earn. Our, uh, the old people, in our country are 28%. And one third of the retired people is below the level of poverty, one third. And uh, just now the prices grow up suddenly and unrealistically because the capital needs more profit if the situation is good for it. Now where is a leak a little bit confusion in the country and among people with the new infections and new COVID. And uh, very uh, people feel very uncertain. And the strongest in the country, they use their positions in, uh, in their, in, uh, for their goals. I wouldn't enter this. 
but uh, most of the work which elderly people uh, did is illegal. For example, let me use just one example. An electro engineer who studied and graduated at the university at the electrotechnical faculty, when he was retired, he started uh, a new, like, let us say, um, electrical sun electricity to use for his home. He installed all proper uh, equipments, which are necessary, as you know, must have a special expression in English, but I don't know it. And, uh, and he used it very nicely for three years. The electricity was free for them, but suddenly they got too much electricity and they sold it to the whole elect electrical system of the country, which needs electricity badly, badly they need electricity. He was punished and all newspapers were full of it that he cheated because he earned some money, his family earned some money through this new sun electricity. And can you imagine the influence to the feelings of retired people and also of young people? How cute are these retired people? Why would they earn? Uh, I'm going to interrupt you now, uh, Anna. Sorry. <laughs> I appreciate very much what you're saying. And we, by the way, have a discussion on Thursday. I'll write to you about on the topic of learning and earning, and you could bring it there. Yes. But I do want, we only have a few minutes left. Yeah. And I want just, to be sure that we stick very clearly to digital inclusion. Okay. okay. I just uh, wanted to show this example to show that our situation is not very good for earning money for retired people, elderly people or uh, get the kind of new legislation present in present time is not likely. But we insist, and mainly they work illegally, many of them. And, uh, and the wonderful and, thing um, is that I, our, our advocacy can, together can work. I need to, to switch from you now to another person. Yes, okay. yes, yes, I will. The, the, the situation in from 1984, when we established our network, the old, the old people were appreciating very much that they can meet, have their coffee, and listen to the lectures and discussions and so on, or watching a film or whatever, and, um, and study together face to face. And 100% was so. Some of them, were you were using maybe 20 percent of them was using uh, internet and uh, digital uh, equipment but a majority didn't know it and we suddenly have to change last year and we started with animating individual group animating groups of mentors systematically in every third age university they need a lot of animation and changing the attitudes of retired people that they, they, they really don't need new technology because at the same time, the country, uh, the uh, state administration, the health system, uh, the uh, culture and everything, you must go to internet to get tickets or to get a recipe for pharmacy or anything. And suddenly these people, they realized that they live in a shelter in third age university, but outside world has changed. And now Corona, when they were blocked in their homes, they suddenly realized they must do something. And at that time, May, April until September, the end of September last year, we offered uh, courses in small groups for um, learning, uh, computing and right. uh, digitalization. Very yeah. good. And we're going to stop at that. Thank you very, very much for those comments. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Osnet, do you see others in the chat? Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, invite, hold on a second, just lost it. Um, 
we don't have that many questions, but we did have a question, just lost it, from um, a Lyle to Richard. Lyle, if you're still there, can you ask your question uh, briefly so Richard can answer at length? So you can just unmute yourself Lyle, and ask. Uh, you, you are, you're muted, Lyle. Yes, I realize that. I'm just trying to find the question. Uh, you just, ask how about did, pairing if contrasting you just, just, just give me a moment. Just give me a moment to go back to the question. 1030. That's when it was. Now, what I said was, uh, I just asked of Richard, just a comment. How about um, pairing or contrasting the terms digital divides with digital dividends, obviously a, a play on word, to emphasize the benefits of digital inclusion because digital inclusion is the means and not the payoff. And it's always good, I think, to uh, capture people with the benefits. So being a, an inveterate punster, I like putting those two terms together, digital divides, digital dividends. I just wonder what you think of that. Uh, I think that's very creative and provocative. Um, you know, one of the reasons why many older adults have not bothered to get online is they don't really see much reason to do so. And, uh, you know, it, it, there's, there's a, a sort of a motivation involved. And I think uh, marketing is always a, a very good thing to be doing. Uh, one of the things I, I've been doing this for 30 years, and one of the conclusions that I came to was that older adult, you know, it's like if you were gonna teach carpentry, uh, people don't wanna learn sawing and hammering, they wanna learn to make a bookshelf or uh, a bird house or something like that. So, you know, the focus should be on the results, not on the means. I, I think that's a very good well point well taken. Thank I you. would just add a quick PS, if I may. We do need to add in a third term, digital dangers. We don't need to debate it right now, but for all ages, I think we need to also balance the discussion with what we know about the, the downside as well as the upside. Yeah, I mean, part of a good, you know, an important part of digital literacy is training in how to uh, avoid scams and uh, problems like that. And I think we have to be honest that those dangers lurk, but they're not so overwhelming that should keep people, I mean, it's not a good reason to keep people from going online at all. Uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, unfortunately, we only have a few minutes left. And uh, Betsy, uh, you have asked an interesting question. Uh, would you want to ask that question, please, Betsy Worley? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. So hello to Richard and Ryan. Um, and thank you. This is wonderful leadership. Uh, I'm based in New York City. Uh, so uh, my question from across the country is, uh, how are you connected with others, uh, maybe especially in the States, but in other countries who are looking at your efforts and trying to build on the work that you are doing? So I think this is a good opportunity. Thank you, Betsy, for the question. For us to plug the Digital Inclusion Priority Group. Uh, this is one of the three top priorities for PION members, uh, along with uh, you know, elder rights and learning and earning. And we are going to be having a meeting on October 26th, same time, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. And Whatever that translates. I think it was uh, Wednesday, October 27th. 27th, uh, sorry. 27th. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, it's going, I'm going to be chairing it along with Bruce Frankel and uh, Linda Smith from South Africa, who are online with us today. And we're going to try to get together and see what we can do on a global basis. We, we started earlier this year. We did started doing some surveying, but you know, we really need to discuss what we should be doing on a global basis. So anybody who is interested, please uh, join us. And Jan, you might suggest what would be the best way for them to participate. Well, that, that leads right into the uh, remarks that I had for the end. I, I mentioned that this conversation is serving as the kickoff 
for the Global Pioneers Priority Group for Digital Inclusion that will be led by Richard, along with Linda Smith, who's here today, who founded 50 Plus Skills in South Africa, and Bruce Frankel, who is creator of the digital communication platform that serves as our network's global connector, also co-president of the Life Planning Network. Bruce is here also. Uh, they will be convening a one and a quarter hour meeting of the Digital Inclusion Group on Wednesday, October 27th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. In the next couple of days, we're gonna send you an invitation for that meeting, uh, along with background information, including a brief summary of today's conversation, plus links to reports or updates or guides that have been mentioned. For example, the PowerPoint presentations uh, linked to that and also to a couple reports. Uh, we hope that you will click on the register box on the invitation and sign up to attend, or if that is not feasible to send in your comments about what's needed for digital inclusion. <clears throat> and if you just wanna, excuse me, <clears throat> keep getting notes about the work of the Digital Inclusion Committee, just uh, you could respond in that way also. So this will be coming. Now, Osna is going to be, is very eager to be sure that each one of you completes the survey. And Osna, would you lead them to that? Yeah, so I pasted it in the uh, chat several times. Your feedback is really important. Uh, complaints, uh, praise, uh, interest, anything that you want to put there. and we started each sentence for you. So all you have to do is complete some sentences. So there's a link in the, in the chat and uh, several times. So please go there and complete it so we will know what you think and try to um, uh, incorporate it in the future programs. And we have a, uh, Jen, right? This is a series. So we have two more coming up. Right, let me just mention that <clears throat> because <clears throat> the speakers presenters for the next session, which will be on November 15th, are here today. Uh, and that includes Helen Hurth Spence uh, from Ottawa in Canada, and uh, Jothan uh, Kashiro uh, from Brooklyn, uh, who are going to be showing us in their own dialogue, uh, ways of promoting uh, the intergenerational dialogue uh, and we're, we're, uh, there is now a round table uh, for intergenerational dialogue. Both of them are members, active members, and have been pursuing ways of, uh, 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 ways of uh, ma maintaining that, that effort in lots of different settings. Uh, uh, the, the, and the final one for this year is going to be on December 13th, which is going to be grandkids and me various programs, a couple of them that we're going to present from, uh, from uh, Wales and from, uh, there's one in California, one in Australia, uh, who, where they work with uh, grandparents and young people uh, to make connections. Uh, uh, one, uh, one more thing, I think, which is the most important thing as we pass, get up to two o'clock here, is to say thank you because I really do feel, Ryan, that we, we want it, the Pass It On Network can act to help disseminate senior planet everywhere in the world. I mean, why not? Uh, uh, because I, I'm so impressed with your organization and the values that we hold together. And Richard, thank you so much for being always our not only scholar and our futurist, but also our friend and companion along the way for the Pass It On Network. Uh, thank you so much, all of you for coming. And I also wanna mention that uh, one of our efforts is on learning and earning as Anna focused on economic security for all older adults. We do have a special program coming up on Thursday all of our liaisons will be receiving an invitation to that on Wednesday. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for all of you who are, have mastered digital communications here. Moira, you have something to say. 
Uh, yes, um, I really want to know if anybody can put in that questionnaire, if you can help us, because even 50-50 doesn't really work. We've got the most amazing collection of people here from 15 countries. You know, Lyle came all the way from New Zealand, and we've got someone from Brazil, and we've got South Africa, and we've got Mauritius, and we've got all over, and we don't have enough time to hear everybody. <laughs> and I don't know how to get through that, because you've all got limited time, but thank you all so much, or add my thanks to Jan's. It's and been from wonderful. Paul from Brazil. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely, us. from Brazil, from all over the place, uh, Brazil, Cape Town, Vienna, Slovenia, Netherlands. And Himachu's here, which is so wonderful from New yeah. Delhi. So please, if you've got any suggestions, give them to us in that questionnaire. It would be a great help. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you very ready. much. We can Bye-bye. Thank you, Osnet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Ryan. Moira, Jan. Thank you, Richard. Was nice. Bye, bye. Thank you, everyone. It was great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Moira. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. It's a short. And Grace, you know, has in Cape Town. Grace has and wonderful. Grace and sure. Just Grace. Deeply so much, so much energy here. I must actually stop recording. Yeah.